So I came into work today, man. Somebody done invaded my locker, but I didn't really have a lock on my locker and that's not really my locker. It was just an open lock. I just put my stuff in, but they took my shield and they took my stethoscope. But luckily I'm over here at this hospital where you can come in here and they got stethoscopes for the free. So I ain't really tripped cause it wasn't my stethoscope. It was really something I just got from the point of use. But if it was mine, I'd have had this place upside down. But I'm finna start my first round right now. Like I told y'all, man, I wear a level two mask around the hospital, but when I start my treatments, I make sure I get an N95. And I got my shield. Bye bye. So I'm finna get ready, get all my meds, start my first round. For y'all that don't know what a round is, that's your like, the patients that you gotta give treatments for, for that seven o'clock time period. All the patients you gotta see for that time. So you gotta do your assessments, you gotta get your nebulized treatments, you gotta do your breath sounds, you gotta do your O2 checks. All that stuff is considered a round. You gotta do that. It's three rounds in every shift because you give every treatment every four hours. Three times four, that's a 12 hour shift, you feel me? So I'm trying to explain a little bit more because Zodi Joe was only about the last video. She's like, yeah, Randy, that's a great video, but it's a lot of stuff you talking about that I don't know what it means or this muscle know what it means. Yeah, you know what? You're right. That's why I love Jody. You feel me? I love the supporter. So, finna start my first round, get my meds, and bring y'all with me for the rest of the day, man. Just keep watching. Keep watching. It's all for my first round, man. Right here, you got Zopinex, you got Duoneb, you got Albuterol, you got Delara, you got, what, the, what is this right here? I ain't never gave this here. Bavespi. I call it Beehive. I call that Queen Bee. Then we got some more Albuterol, Zopinex. That's where we at with it, man. So, now that I got all my meds, but really, I still don't have all my meds because at this hospital, they keep Pomacort in the patient's like chart and like a safe, secure area. It's only Pomacort. It's only a corticoid steroid. There's not nothing too wild and crazy. But hey, that's how they treat the medication. So I just got to go buy it. But this is where we at with it right now. Put this in my pocket and I'm finna hit the road. Got to go and get that Pomacort.
After finishing up my rounds, it's now time to do some charting. First round is complete. Do a little documentation. I'm typing very fast. I am still resting toward there because I'm typing right now. I'm looking back and I'm still typing. I have two mics, not one. I'm using two mics. Shout out to two chains. Typing away. I'm doing this with one hand. I love that support therapy. One hand type, another hand is scratching myself, looking at my stethoscope. I'm a skilled therapist. After completing that, I take a walk through the hospital. And it's a good thing to know as a traveler, you must find the areas that are the chill spots without the hospital. You got to know what areas are safe to chill in when you have your downtime. Because you don't want to be in the wrong spot. Uh, a ministry or person see you and they go see the department and say this and say that. So... Finding the chill spots in the hospital is mandatory, especially for night shift where you have a lot of downtime. You can see I'm going through a lot of exit doors, a lot of loops, a lot of corners, and a lot of turns because I have downtime. And trust me, I'm going to use that downtime to unwind. During this assignment, this was like the least I've ever worked as a respiratory therapist ever. Y'all getting paid the most money I've ever gotten paid. That's just where the field is today, man, the COVID pandemic. That's the situation we have at hand. Currently, I'm right here in this little chill spot that I found. It's on like the fourth floor, fifth floor. It has a great view of looking the city. They got leather seats, red is my favorite color. So I'm gonna pop a squat right here, take off my shield. And now it is time to chill. So when I'm in my downtime, I really just like unwind, try to take a load off, try to think about everything but the work at hand because you got to like decompress your mind sometimes so i'm really just thinking about like future moves future plays how my family doing back home like how to really like use this income that i'm getting and do the right things with it because it's so hard to do wrong with it when it's coming in so fast at a large amount you want to do things like take care of your priorities not just go out there and splurge and, you know, play around. You want to really handle your business. And that's what I try my best to do, to do 100%. But it's easier said than done. Great Falls, Montana. I love this hospital. I'm really enjoying it. The views are great. Like, look at this view over here. Can you guys see this over here? Overlooking the city. Feeling like P. Diddy. It look like I'm staring at myself, don't it? Wow, that's kind of... It's kind of ironic right now. It's kind of unique, isn't it? I'm looking at my only competition. If that's my competition. I'm looking at me. <laughs> that's it. And if you guys can notice, drop down in the comments. Do you see how I'm getting me these good angles and these good views? If drop down in the comments and let me know that I'm doing a good job, I would appreciate that. Now, I've been in this spot for too long. And sometimes, too much of anything is a bad thing. Too much downtime can be bad. So, I'm going to go and find some work to do and get back to it because I don't want to be considered a slacker. Even though all my work is done, I'm just enjoying my downtime. Down the stairs we go, and I'm doing it in my retro Jordan 6s. You gotta have those, like, I prefer style over comfort. That's just how I'm living. I gotta find some work. Who need help? Let me go call somebody. So, we heading into the second rounds. And like I said before, if you guys don't remember, after the first round, they do a recount of the numbers, so a lot of treatments are given just while awake, so we lose a lot of productivity. So they change around like your assignments, so you can still have like a reasonable number of stuff to do, and it'll be divided up evenly. So I currently, first round, I had all the floors. Now second round, all my floor treatments are done. I have no more Q4, I've just got two patients receiving treatments out of the nine that I had to see. So now I'm covering that area I had before, and now I'm in a unit. As you can see, I got the ventilator behind me, this is a PB840, PB840 right here. I used this vent before the old my PRN trauma hospital I used to work at. So now I'm covering the e, now I'm covering the unit, and I got one vent. Let me tell you exactly what I got. I got one vent and four treatments. So. I got a total of six treatments all together, and I got one vent in the ICU. Most money I ever made, the less work I ever did. Travel respiratory therapy, I'm not, hey man. And I know a lot of people wanna know, Randy, is it too late to, is it too late to do travel respiratory therapy because the COVID numbers are down, COVID numbers are down. 
the COVID numbers are down or up, with travel respiratory therapy, you're still gonna make the most money. Now it may not be crisis pay, but it's still gonna be big bankrolls. Keep watching, just keep watching. So things kind of picked up. Checking back in with y'all, man. Things kind of picked up. I picked up some vents in the unit, so some patients got intubated in the unit, so I had to take some vents that was in the unit and use those. So now I'm gonna replace those vents. I came back to the storage area where they keep all the vents. Gonna take two vents back upstairs. I'm gonna get a PB980. Then I'm gonna get a PB840. This is right here. I'm gonna take this back upstairs. Then I got a patient that's on like nocturnal BiPAP that's using treatments. So I'm gonna put the T adapter in line with that, keep the patient on the BiPAP and give them a treatment. See I'm hitting myself on my head? Cause I'm working. See Jody think I'm gonna be working man, but I do. And that's where we at with that man. I'm gonna check back in with y'all again later. Give y'all a full little, whole little roundup of what all went down throughout my night. You know that car talk that you know and love. But right now I'm finna get back to work. It's about 3.45 in the a.m. And I'm working. Hey man, you don't work, you don't eat. And you know for my family, I do what I gotta do. Today is like one of the first days in like such a long time where I don't have to like shovel snow or like brush snow off the car. So that's a good look, man. It's only like 38 degrees, 39 degrees, but compared to what it was, compared to that negative 20, negative 40, bro, I feel great, man. I ain't tripping. Let me get in here and start this car talk, dog. Oh. Start this car talk situation. Whoa. So, let me turn my car on. Hold on, let me turn my car on. Gotta turn my seat warmers on. Cause my seat's cold, you feel me? Like, so I don't, I don't wanna have a cold bottom while I'm talking to y'all. That'd be kinda, that'd be a little weird. Let me see, man. So last night, I was covering the floors. And then I, end, I started off covering the floors and I ended up covering the floors and the units. Let me get some stuff out of my... So y'all know, well, if y'all don't know, this is my last week here. This is my last week here in Montana with this travel assignment. And these women who here from Kentucky, they got these candies right here, like some Kentucky candy. It's marshmallows covered in caramel. And when I tell you it's delicious, Bro, I'm trying to get on my healthy stuff, my fruit, my working out, really getting my body like hard body, no steroids, ripped up, zipped up, you feel me, for the summertime. But hey, these right here, bro. So, so they know I like them so much and they know that this is my last week here that they brought me my own bag and I appreciate it, man, because they don't sell these in Florida, so I'm gonna be having to, having to literally like order these from online. It's gonna cost like 25 bucks to get it to my house. 25 bucks total and I'm willing to do it for these. Yes, cuz bro If you had one of these, you know But last night Like I said, I started off covering the floors then I ended up covering the floors and the units I'm super 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 homesick like man, I'm not gonna lie like man It ain't easy traveling like it's not easy man, but you know like I didn't want to be no travel therapist, y'all know. I ain't want to be no travel respiratory therapist, man, but my place of employment where I was at, like they kind of forced my hand. And there's more money out here. Like I said, man, I'm homesick. I miss my family, like my son, like you feel me? I've been gone more than I've been home since my dog, been, since my little dog been born. And that's the sacrifice I got to make as like the man, as like the head of the household, as like, a provider for my family like i made that i made that sacrifice so my girl can be there with my son like taking care of him like you feel me that motherly love and i have to worry about going to work i have to worry about bills you feel me it's really like handling my business like a 
like a real man, bro. So, you know, I do what I gotta do for my family. Like, I mean that, like, bro, I do what I gotta do. And I got an apple in here too, so you gotta eat. So I'm, I'm, I'm eating healthy. But that candy, that's delicious. Started off on the floors, had a whole bunch of treatments. I had like, probably nine treatments. I said a whole bunch, I only had nine. So I only had nine treatments, man. I had nine people to see. But out of that nine people, it was, it was like um, a unique bunch, you feel me? It was very like diverse. I had some old people, I had some young people. I had one lady who I've been taking care of, who I've been giving like respiratory therapy treatments since I've been here like for the last two months. And I was just told to report that she was going to hospice. I'm like, dang, that was my dog, man. And I went to the room, she wasn't even there. She's like, she was already gone. So. So I really only had eight treatments to give, man. That's like, man. that's the circle of life, man. Like Shorty was like, man, we was just, she was just in the room the other day watching like um a game show channel. They show nothing but game show. She was watching like, what they call that? Family Feud, Family Feud with like Steve Harvey. She was watching that and we were trying to guess the answers. As she was taking treatment, we were trying to scream out the answers. And not Shorty. I'm saying shorty, but she was in a, she was like 88 years old. So it was, you lived a long life, but you know, like, yeah, y'all know what I mean. One guy, like alcohol, history of alcohol abuse, ETOH, taking his treatments. Hey, brother, hey, brother, hey, brother, hey, brother, how you doing, brother, how you doing, brother, how you doing, brother, how you doing, brother, 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 brother. Hey, bro, I ain't your brother, though. But hey, I, I, I get what you're saying, but just, just tone it down, my boy. I'm a, I'm with you, but just tone it down. Like, I ain't saying, you can't call me a brother. I'm just saying, hey, just tone it down. Like, the way you saying, brother, 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 you think I was your real blood brother, my boy? Like, we came out of this, yay, how you talking? But with that floor therapy, it was literally like, man, you know, assessments, give my nebulizers, give my MDIs. And that was it. Like nobody was really like any in any like critical condition where you had to like worry about a cold being called, rapid response being called. The highest amount of FiO2 somebody was on was six liters. How much FiO2 is six liters, man? I already gave y'all the game. Come on, man. How many FiO2? How much FiO2 is six liters? Y'all let me know. That was the highest amount of oxygen that somebody was on. They were saying 93, 94%. They've been doing that for the whole eight weeks I've been here. So it was at their normal base. And then, and then bro, after that, I went I went to the gym. I, I went to the gym. Like, I, I, bro, Montana? Montana replaced itself? Like, I don't, I don't know, it ain't really too much. I don't know, right? I don't know, I ain't even no mall, so I don't know. But like the work, the job, the hospital? Oh, it's cool, you know? I don't have my ups and downs now. I don't have some crazy run-ins, but for the most part, I do my round. I finish my work. I can literally go down to the gym and lift up the dumbbells and get silly. And if somebody called me, I got my special link right here. And like, bro, nobody trips about this. Like, this is something everybody does. The doctors down here, the nurses down here. Like, this is like common practice. Bro, that's the, you know how ripped, bro. You know how, do y'all know how swole I be and ripped up and bro. I be doing car talks like this. I be so strong, dog. So after that round, I went down to the gym, took care of that, like y'all seen. Then I got the units. The unit. I'm saying units. But I got the unit. And I started off with one vent. And they wanted me to put a patient on bipap. They had nocturnal bipap. Put that patient on, on nocturnal bipap. There was no problem. Had a lot of confused patients. Like, I mean, a lot of confused patients. You going out for your treatment? Hello, I'm ready for my I had your breathing treatment. Oh, it's so good to see you again. Welcome back. How did you perform for that crowd? I got your nebulizer here. Put the treatment on the patient. You turn your back, the patient take it off. You put it back on, they take it off. You hold it, they move your hands, and take it off. No means no. You feel me? Hey, no means no. Then I had um my one vented patient that was a trach. That's been vented for like, bro, since I've been here for a minute. Like a lot of these people have been in this hospital for a minute since I've been here. Homie on a trait. And they, they got the order was Q8 trait care. 
So I don't know when the last time it was done, but it was left on me to do it because it was so like filthy and disgusting. Like I had to take it. I, I wouldn't feel right just knowing I left that. So I really provided the tray care, took care of all that, man. Did that with no problem. Cleaned the man up. He was he was grateful. He was like calm and acting acting like a normal human being. Cause before that, they said dog was in there kicking, biting, punching, trying to get hold of stuff. So I'm like, hey, whoa. Just make sure you don't get that trait, cause that trait fresh, boy. Make sure you don't get hold of that, cause that thing that's still that's, that's still fresh. So did that, and what the events here, like every night you gotta write down like um that you tried to wean the patient. Well, a lot of hospitals do that. A lot of hospitals do like at least you gotta, you gotta write down like did they fail the weaning trial or why weren't they put on a weaning trial? Why why didn't they try spontaneous mode? But the patient was already in the mode called volume support ventilation it's a, it's a spontaneous volume support mode which have a it has a tidal volume set but it's not delivered like I don't, this is my first time coming across that mode like volume support mode it's very different very unique and to really understand like how it really really works i need y'all help on that y'all google that for me let me know in the comments please let me know man volume support spontaneous ventilation Y'all let me know. If I'm spontaneous, I'm spontaneous. But then I got volume support here. With a with a set title volume. Y'all let me know. Then throughout that shift, I had picked up that, that other vet that y'all had seen me get. Patient came in with like had been transferred from one hospital and fell down. Had like subarachnoid hemorrhage. But the therapist that was taking care of the patient in the ER was like. Brandy, this patient didn't need to be intubated, man. The patient was on six liters, sat in 100%. Only thing was that the patient was just curled up in bed, acting like he was, a, like, yeah, he was kind of like grabbing at things, but nothing need to be intubated. But I don't see plenty of times where a patient coming to acting a little unruly, ain't really getting with the program. Hey, put him down. We finna put him down. <laughs> I don't see this, man. Can you want to act up? Propofol? Intubate, dog. I don't see this, man, so. That's not really nothing new to me, dog. But then the patient get upstairs, and then they talking about um, we're gonna try a spontaneous trial. We're gonna try to see if we can the patient, bro. The man was just intubated 30 minutes ago. But hey, when in Rome, do as the Romans. And like a lot of things people ask me to do here, man, that the doctors normally should be doing, but some of the doctors choose not to do it here. The doctor puts in event orders. So the nurse comes to me and says, hey, um, does he have order for um, spontaneous breathing trial? I'm like, checking the orders. I'm like, no, he actually doesn't have orders for anything. She's like, can you just put him in? I'm like, you know me, hey, I'm, I'm new here. I'm, I'm new here, oh no, I'm new here. So she go ask the doctor. Doctor tell, tell her, no, he can do it. I'm like, come on, man. It's just one dog, you feel? He, and dog, he just tripping, man. Dog don't wanna work, man. Dog just tripping, so. The, the, the lady, the nurse who asked me to do it, and I said I was new here, she called down to the um, supervisor and was like, hey, can you show Randy how to put in orders for vent settings? What's her to do? And like, we got something called a Bocera, so it's like a speaker, so it's like, it speaks out. And so the, 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 um, the charge therapist was like, they don't worry about it, I'll do it. I'm like, no, I can do it. I'm like, no, I got, I got it, I got it. I'm like, all right, cool. But I'm like, hey, man, so what are you kind of disrespectful? But at the same time, I did tell her, I did tell her, yeah, I'm new here, man. That's my, hey, that's my excuse for everything. If I don't know something, somebody kind of, uh, yeah, I'm new here. I don't know, I'm new here. I'm new here, I'm new here. I'm keeping I'm real with y'all. I'm new here. I'm new, dog. I'm new. I'm new. I'm new. <laughs> so now, I'm about to go home, man. Have some fruit and some sushi for breakfast. That's what I'm eating sushi and breakfast. Sushi and fruit for breakfast. And I'm really like just trying to watch like the stuff I eat, like for real, for real, not nah, man. Cause one night I was down here, I had like stayed over to help the night shift. I stayed over and got an extra four hours. The first time I did overtime. And I ate some, uh, and over here like everywhere, everywhere closes at like 8.30, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock they close, so there's no food to get. And I'm out here wailing one time, I don't know how to cook. I ain't, come on man, I need some, go to a spot to get something to eat. The only place that was open was McDonald's. I got a 10-piece chicken nugget. 
that was all I was gonna get. I said, like, you know what? I got a McDouble. Did I get only thing? I, did I get fries? I I got a small fry. After I ate that, and like I don't eat, like, I don't eat that kind. Of, I don't eat that kind of stuff, though. And I said that kind of stuff because that ain't really like. I don't know what the hell they serving y'all in that man or whoever eating it. But after I got done eating that food, man, when I say my, I felt so disgusting and horrible and filthy. My stomach was hurting. It was swollen, bro. I ain't know what that food was. Hey, since then, man, I ain't really messing with nothing. I only want to eat fast food. I'm, I'm good on it, my boy. Cause I'm, I don't even want to get into all that healthy thing. But I just know I'm. Hey, man, give me some sushi, man. Then I'm like. I just got on sushi. I used to never eat sushi. I'm like, it ain't cooked. It ain't cooked. It, it's just, it, it's not cooked. So what I'm saying is, I want something that's like dipped in flour, fried in grease, then given, then given to me. Now that's cooked. No, that's filthy, dog. That's hurting you, my boy. So you know, man, it's all about you know maturity, man. You know, elevation. Man. Cause like that's what I consider cooked. Steamed ain't cooked. I'm just. I'm just somewhat different with it, man. But hey, thank y'all for watching, man. RRT Posse, man. Y'all know. Life on the road. I'm, I'm here. I'm finna go somewhere else. Like, for my family, I do what I gotta do.